My fifth point is that in general, the reception of the Strasbourg case law into domestic law, I would suggest has been seamless and unproblematic to the extent that it has now become routine. However, there have been exceptions in which the domestic courts have not been prepared to follow a decision of the European Court of Human Rights. But this was because it was felt to be based on a misunderstanding of the domestic position, rather than a fundamental refusal to comply with the decision of the Strasbourg Court. And there are two areas in particular where this has occurred. The first is the reception of hearsay evidence in criminal trials. And the second is sentencing, particularly where a whole life order is imposed for the offence of murder. I'll take each of those in turn. In a case called Horncastle in 2009, uh, Lord Phillips suggested that the requirement to take into account the Strasbourg jurisprudence will normally result in the domestic court applying principles that are clearly established by the Strasbourg court. There will, however, be rare occasions where the domestic court has concerns as to whether a decision of the Strasbourg court sufficiently appreciates or accommodates particular aspects of our domestic process. In such circumstances, it is open to the domestic court to decline to follow the Strasbourg decision, giving reasons for adopting this course. This is likely to give the Strasbourg court the opportunity to reconsider the, the particular aspect of the decision so that there takes place what may prove to be a valuable dialogue. It's interesting, there is a judicial use of the very word that I think is going to feature uh, frequently at today's conference, a valuable dialogue between the domestic court and the Strasbourg court. And what happened in that case was that Horncastle uh, was decided after the section of the Strasbourg court had decided a case called al Khawaja and Tahiri. That case then went to the Grand Chamber, which took account of what the House of Lords had said in Horncastle and modified the ruling in Strasbourg. Uh, they agreed that a conviction based solely or decisively on the statement of an absent witness would not automatically result in a breach of Article 6 of the Convention. However, there would still be a breach of the defendant's rights unless there were counterbalancing factors, including strong procedural safeguards to compensate for the difficulties caused to the defence. But they took into account the dialogue which the House of Lords had entered into with them. The uh, <clears throat> standard which has been set by the UK Supreme Court to depart from Strasbourg authority is a very high one. In one of the prisoner voting cases, Chester, in 2013, Lord Mance said that Strasbourg's decision would have to relate to some truly fundamental principle of our law or some most egregious oversight or misunderstanding before it could be appropriate for this court to contemplate an outright refusal to follow Strasbourg authority at the Grand Chamber level. The second area I've mentioned is whole life orders and the case law there developed in this way in Winter and others, the Strasbourg court held that the UK's imposition of whole life orders for uh, three convicted murderers was in violation of Article 3. The court said that only irreducible life sentences in both a de facto and de jure sense offended Article 3, that is, those cases in which there was neither prospect of release nor the possibility of review. In a subsequent case in the Court of Appeal, the Crown against Newell, the Court of Appeal of England and Wales said that Strasbourg had misunderstood the nature of the UK regime, which it considered was consistent with the principles as articulated in Winter. Uh, the Court clarified what the position was in domestic law. Subsequently, in a case called Hutchinson against the United Kingdom, the Grand Chamber held the decision in Newell had helpfully clarified the domestic position, and that clarification dispelled the view that the UK position was incompatible <coughs> with the ECHR. So again, a process of healthy dialogue 